Well, I think that it's always a very serious possibility, particularly when dealing with, with, with Putin, because we've seen that he has invaded in the past. He's annexed Crimea. And Putin sees Ukraine as a part of Russia and is becoming increasingly concerned that Ukraine is inching towards the West and that Ukraine is basically slipping from his sphere of influence. And so we see with 100,000 uh, Russians on the border, we see that there are military and naval exercises taking place, uh, that Putin's sending a very clear message to the West that he indeed could invade. Uh, and, and it's a real possibility uh, and it's something to be taken very seriously. And that's why I think we see such a strong response uh, from the U.S. and other NATO countries to be prepared. Yes, indeed. Now, the U.S., Australia and U.K. are, are withdrawing embassy staff, warning nationals living there to leave. Is that uh, advice warranted at this point? Well, from the Ukrainian perspective, they disagree with this and they feel that that is really too abrupt. Uh, and, and that rather they should wait it out because then that's sending a message to, to the Russians and to Putin that there is an area of weakness there. Uh, and the Ukrainians are also critical of the West for not being united enough, for not sending enough uh, uh, weapons into the country. They're specifically thinking of wanting more anti-tank uh, hardware uh, and for not being willing to back up Ukraine from a, a military perspective in terms of sending actual troops in. I think that's one step too far that Biden is, really is probably not going to be able to, to come through on. Uh, so you see that there is concern in, in Ukraine about the situation, but to some extent, there's a, a little bit of a calm as they're going about their business and they don't want uh, diplomatic personnel to leave too abruptly. Yeah. Talking of the kind of military response that Ukraine might get or military support, what form do you think it might take if there was an invasion? I think that's the problem, that the, the West isn't willing to actually go in there and send troops. They're willing to send more military weapons. They're, you know, we have a, a U.S. aircraft carrier in the Mediterranean. It's under NATO control. That's the first time that, that that's happened since the Cold War. And there's going to be really, really tough economic sanctions. Now, these sanctions, with the exception of Germany, that may not be on the same page with this, but these sanctions, if they are implemented, would be as tough as some of the sanctions that Iran faces. They would affect the banking sector. This would really bring Russia to its knees economically. So there would be a very, very tough response. I just think that the West isn't willing to go as far as actually put troops inside Ukraine and get involved in some sort of conflict inside Ukraine. Yeah. And talking of that threat of sanctions, as you say, they would be very severe, but Putin has never really been perturbed by those threats in the past on other issues. Right, that's true. And the sanctions that are currently in place are not destabilizing to Russia's economy, but they're making it impossible for Russia's economy to grow. And so it's a little bit of putting Russia sort of caught in no man's land, that they, they, can, they can't really grow and get any bigger, uh, but it's not really having the devastating effect that these new sanctions might. And we've seen that there are many authoritarian regimes that aren't deterred by sanctions. That we see Iran has faced some of the toughest sanctions and has not uh, agreed to make, uh, you know, huge changes to the regime. So sanctions really only work when they can really put a blow to the dictator and to the elite group that supports them. But these new sanctions might, because we're going to see Putin's popularity rating, it may fall within Russia, that's going to be destabilizing. And at the end of the day, Putin cares most about his own security and maintaining himself in power. Yeah. And what about the, the, the suggestions that Russia will, instead of invading, put in a favourable candidate, a supportive candidate, a Russia sympathetic ca uh, candidate as prime minister? Is that, do you think, a feasible or viable concept? That is likely. I, mean, I almost see that as more likely scenario than Russia actually invading because there are huge costs to invading. Whereas what might be even simpler for the Russians is to somehow find a way to get a candidate in there 
that is very sympathetic and close to the Russians like Yanukovych was uh, for many years before until he was um, moved, removed from power. Uh, so I, I think that would be the easiest way for the Russians to be able to control Ukraine. And that's ultimately what they would like. They would like Ukraine to be more like Belarus, where there's a close relationship between Putin and Lukashenko and where Putin can count on the Ukrainians to to back them up at any point in time and, and can basically get them to do whatever they want to do. Yeah. Natasha, always good to get your uh, analysis. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.